All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Fortunes in Reselling. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to improve your sales by spotting and overcoming bad habits. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have habits either that I know of or that I don't know of, uh, things that I uh, try to improve on that ultimately garners more sales. But we'll talk about processes, inventory, listing, shipping, supplies, just to name a few. Uh, we'll introduce the panel as normal, and then we'll get into the topic. So let's start with Scott. Yeah, on the bearded picker, I wore this shirt right here. RG slot wins. I wore this for you to remind you. <laughs> I never pulled for y'all guys. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, YouTube, do eBay, Amazon. Pretty much if there's a way to chase it, I chase it. Jason? What's going on, guys? This is Thrift Trader. Uh, glad to be here. Another Sunday night live show. And uh, tonight's topic is going to be really easy for me to talk about. <laughs> Wade? What's going on, guys? Wade with Wade's Ventures here. And uh, yes, great topic tonight. Um, great topic. And welcome in. Hit smash the like button. Smash the like button. All right, guys. So let's just go down the line here and maybe talk about uh, a habit where you notice something and you ultimately changed it and it uh, helped your, your business processes. So for me, uh, story inventory. Um, trying to, because when I buy inventory, I'll list it and then I'll put it in a pile and I'll, I won't even hang it up. It'll take me a while to get it there. Uh, so basically changing it where once I list it, get it on a hanger and get it where it needs to go. Otherwise, I'm never going to find it. Yeah, that happened to me as well. Uh, last summer when Jacob first started with all the tubs, uh, he was listing 24 a day and he did that for what, what his summer from college. So it was what, almost close to four months. And halfway through, the difficulty was I can remember where I put stuff if I listed it. But it two months ago by and I hadn't listed most of the stuff because uh, I was doing the shipping, I was doing the sourcing, whatever. And, you know, it quickly became, oh, hell, I, I'm spending way too much time looking for this stuff. And so, you know, we started putting the bins on there and using the custom skew to, to bring it to where now it's only half the stuff I look for because it's, it's finally, and now everything new has a has a bin number, has a, it, you, you have to do that at some point, it drives you nuts. Yeah, the, the thing uh, with me is, you know, I dealt with clothing for the longest time in only clothing and reselling. And so when, uh, when I switched to hard goods or anything other than clothing, like I didn't know really quite how I was going to inventory that stuff. And so I would list it and just set it all in kind of a pile in a corner. And after a while, you know, it got to where it was difficult for me to even find things. And so it slowed down my process of shipping, you know, locating the item and shipping it out. So I just started, you know, every evening after I'm done listing things, I inventory it and put it on the shelf that it belongs on. So, yeah, uh, Diverse Flip said they do filing cabinets for clothing. It's great. The one thing I'll tell you is if it works for you, there's there's no wrong way. And you got to come up with something that works for you. I, I talk about that a lot is you can't be someone else. You can't, uh, you can, you can learn from sort of what they do. But if you're trying to copy, you know, you need to play to your strengths and how you know that your mind works. And so a filing cabinet, I know a lot of people who do a lot of uh, postcards and pictures and stuff. Filing cabinets are awesome because you can just put thousands and thousands of them in there. Uh, but just because it sounds different, sounds strange, if it works for you, man, that's, that's what you do. Keep yourself organized so you understand where everything is. Yeah, I mean... For clothing, uh, my system actually requires a little bit of space, but I usually keep all of my clothing hanging with skew tags on the hangers in sequential order. Uh, and the reason for that is I can, I don't have to, I don't have to take the time to fold the item and put them in bags until the item is already sold. So I'm actually able to list more and kind of prep for shipping only after the item is sold. But again, you know that takes clothing racks, and it also takes up space. I can't tell you how many times that uh, Scott had mentioned not finding something. Uh, every time that happens to me, either I'm on a hangout with Scott and Shane, but uh, either I can't find something, and it takes me 30 to 40 minutes to find it, and I just ruined my night because I still have 15 items to ship, 
Um, but a lot of times, not something falls apart in my own process, and I'm kind of it that way. But a lot of times, I find broken processes in my own business when I watch other people. So I go and watch YouTube, and I say, "All right, look how they're doing things. Look how they're storing hats. Look how they're storing clothes. Maybe I can pick off a piece of that, and that'll help help myself out." Uh, I thought Jason kept his clothes behind a big bin behind him. Was am, I, am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the not listed inventory. That doesn't count. <laughs> and that, and yeah, I love the chat. We have some of the best chat. I mean, really great people. Uh, Rhonda, we got drunk in our trunk. Says uh, she's been a professional organizer thirty years. Um, I'm telling you, if you don't have an idea how you want to do it, or you want some suggestions. Ask folks, you know, people will be glad to help you, give you suggestions, you know, spend, you know, organize your thoughts into, a, a, you know, email paragraphs. Say, hey, this is what I got. Can, can you, can you give me suggestions on how it's something that, that, that people can answer quickly. You'll get a lot more. Like I got one this morning saying, uh, love your videos. I just started. What should I buy? I can't answer that question. I said, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. I can't answer that question. But if you say, you know, I've been doing this for, for six months and I'm having trouble with inventory. What kind of what kind of inventory system to use? I can tell you, bins. Each bin is in alphabetical order, and each one has a label on. It. I can tell you that, and then you use custom skew very very quickly. I can help you. So, uh, you know, organize your thoughts, specific questions, and get help. Don't struggle. Get help. Yeah, they and everybody's talking about the um, cabinets, you know, and um, you can actually get those filing cabinets pretty cheap. Um, a lot of people just give them away. You look on Craigslist, those things, people are just giving those things away if you guys use those for inventory. So I have three filing cabinets I'm ready to give away for free. So come come visit me. <laughs> yeah, filing cabinets are full of junk over here. The, um, right now, um, Walmart has, um, there's a color, it's a aqua water or whatever they're calling it. If you do a search on, I'll, I'll see if I can find the SKU here in a minute. They were $5.98 or $6.49. A lot of places are marked down to 2 and $3.00. These are 18 liter tubs. So you might want to check brick seat to see if you can find some. I mean, that's, that's over half price on, on these big tough stair light tubs, just at one color though. So, um, I was supposed to go get some this afternoon, but I started watching, started watching the dirt with Motley crew and well, couldn't stop watching. Them. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times my inventory system has changed since I've gotten more inventory. When I first started, you know, I could keep everything in this little corner over here. But as I, as I bought more games, then I have a game spot. As I bought more polo shirts, I started to get a clothing rack. So your inventory system and your size will determine kind of probably the best way to go. Yeah. I think, oh, uh, I was just going to say one, one thing that one mistake that I made early on was I spent a bunch of money on my inventory system. And then I changed it so many times that I lost a lot of money, right? Because I used different racks, higher racks, like different bins like now i use the clear bins as opposed to the ones that you can't see through so i can see my inventory level and don't have to open up every single bin right um and there's there's so many different things that you'll change along the way so i really i really think especially if you don't have a lot of money is try to do it as cheap and as affordable as possible at the beginning so over time you realize kind of what you're going to be doing and then maybe possibly at that point get those big industrial racks or something but you you will change your process like chris said quite a few times and it can get quite spendy. I mean, some of those, just one rack I have, you know, it's like 40, 50 bucks. So, yeah, you, you got to, as over time, you're going to change your process and make sure that you, at the beginning, as if you're a new seller, try to do it as affordable as possible. And don't be afraid to think outside of the box. Um, the shelves you can see behind me, they look kind of tall behind me. It's because they are. This, this building was, is built with 10-foot ceilings, and the shelves were six-footers but they're in halves. So I stack another half on top to make all the shelves nine foot, As, except for when you get over to where the garage door is, you can't do it on that one <laughs> where the garage door rails are. But uh, so, you know, think outside the box too. Vertical is a lot of play. You look around most play. Um, and one of my videos, I guess last year, maybe in the year before last, I was at a yard sale and somebody had the cabinets that go over a, a, a stove. And I'm like, how much? They said five bucks. I'm, so I hung I hung them over the over my shipping area, and what do you know? It's the perfect length to put a roll of uh, craft paper between where the where the sink would go, and so you, it work it works out great. I've got cabinets on both sides that go vertical now right there as well. So don't 
don't uh, don't miss vertical when you're thinking about organizing your space. A small space, you can take 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 advantage of every inch of it. One thing that helped me, guys. The one thing I struggle with early on is when I quit my corporate job. There's almost this weird feeling, right? Um, so for like a couple months, it may not happen to a lot of you guys, but as you go from full time to part time, you kind of get lost a little bit, especially if you work for a corporate business, because you, you're like, "What do I do?" You've been doing it part time for a while, but in your mind, it's just this really weird, foggy feeling that you don't have that guaranteed paycheck. And uh, so, I guess my point here was, is you know. The the one thing that you can almost guarantee that you know you can fix as a business when it comes to eBay and Amazon is chicken scratch what you did that day to actually make you money. Uh, there's a lot of fluff that you can do in your business, meaning you know there's you can go out on errands or you can tweak your system a million times. There's things that you do constantly throughout the day that doesn't end up paying you money. It just helps with your process, which is great. But as you're an early on seller or you're going full time to uh, you know part time to full time. Maybe uh, chicken scratch how many listings you did that day or, or have something on an Excel doc or something that you can physically see the actual workload that you're putting in to equate to money because you can have great sourcing. You can have the amazing stuff, really expensive stuff, really, you know, uh, uh, multiple quantity stuff. But it's actually if it's not listed, you won't make money. It's got to be listed in front of eyeballs to make money. And that's what I struggled with early on was, you know, it, it's almost like if you don't keep track of your finances. You're not going to know where you're spending money, right? Same concept for listing. If you're not keeping track of how many listings you're doing, you're not going to realize what work you're putting in to equate to actually making money. And so that's something that a lot of people struggle with. So it, as much as you track your finances and what you're spending off your business, also track your, your, your progress and what you're listing or your progress and what you're sending into Amazon box wise. You know, so uh, that's one thing that I can highly recommend if you're struggling. Go back to the basics, find out exactly exactly how much you're actually putting in front of people so they can buy and then um, you know go from there. See, that's kind of something that I struggle with uh, in all the honesty uh, Wade is is uh, sitting down and getting you know 10, 15, 20 listings a day. Uh, you know it doesn't seem like a lot, but at the day's end after you've worked your tail off on other other things other than listing. I mean, it really is a struggle to sit down and list 10 items a day. Um, you know, just because I'm a full-time reseller doesn't mean, you know, that I don't have a lot of other things going on. I, I, if I had the ability to take this camera and show you guys, um, exactly what, uh, what I've been doing in my garage, you would flip out because I mean, literally the past couple of days, I've taken all of this stuff that I've gotten from storage units and I've boxed up a lot of this garage sale stuff to make room for everything else. And what that's done, I mean, I've got probably 30 or 35, 24 inch by 18 inch by 18 inch boxes of just garage sale stuff. And the reason why I did that was so that I could go vertical with it, free up some space because it was just getting to the point with all of this stuff that I just, it was hard to think it was hard to like figure out a place to start really. And so I had to start from one end and work to the next. So, I mean, that's the thing is, is like Wade said, if I've got plenty of really good stuff to sell, but it's not make, making me any money because it's not on eBay yet or it's not on Amazon yet. And uh, that's something that I'm, that I'm currently struggling with and I just need to sit down and list. So. It's a double edged sword really when it comes down to it, guys, we, us full timers, you know, and I don't mean that to separate full time to part time, but when you go full time, you don't have that guaranteed paycheck. Life happens, you know. There's some um, babysitter can't come to watch the kids, so you're watching the kids, which hinders your business, right? And um, you know, in Scott's case, his, his uh, amazing wife obviously had that, um, you know, she's going through that traumatic experience, and he has to take her sometimes to the doctors, right? And that eats into his time. You know, there's a lot of things that you do in this business when you're full time that eats into your eats into your business, and a lot of times too is you got to realize that it's a blessing. You can set your own schedule, but it also hurts you. So the only way to really combat that is to just make sure that when you do have full focus, you're putting that energy towards actually getting products in front of the buyers, so that way you can actually make that money. Because there's been a lot of times people go full time, you list five, ten items on eBay. That's not going to cut it unless you're doing really expensive watches or jewelry or whatever the case may be. 
So you've really got to focus and hone in on those. I think like the main thing is, is it's not necessarily an eight hour day. I figure my day, not an eight hour day, but a four hour day. That's what I try to figure out. So in four hours, can I cram in a ton of stuff that is actually going to benefit me? Um, because I think that's really the mindset now. It's like, you know, you can't cram everything in and be really honed in for eight hours, but for four hours you can, you can get a lot done with the, in those four hours. I'm sure there's a lot of people in chat that, you know, is, have you ever asked yourself like when you're working and you're honed in, like, dang, I got a lot done in those four hours, right? Well, that's kind of the way I think of it is bust your butt for four hours. And then if something else happens in your life for the next four or five hours, you really got in what you need to get in to be successful. That's just my point. Yeah, for, for me, it uh, really takes my – it changes the, my thought thought process. We all let, – let's face it. We all love the source. We all hate the list. It doesn't matter whether it's eBay, Amazon. I don't care how easy they, it makes it to throw in a box with Amazon. It's still tedious. It's still not the fun glamour. But you have to – in your own mind, once you equate, you know, it's true that when you buy it, you, you make you make the, the, the margin is there on the buy. But until it's in front of eyeballs, like Wade just said, that you, it's just opportunity. You can't, it's got, you've got to equate the money part of the deal with the listing part. And so, you know, that's also for most of us, you know, we need that part because you're, we're all trying to make a living. We're trying to earn money for something. And so the sooner you can relate that, hey, that is the money making section of this deal. That's where the rubber hits the road, the listing, the boxing, the whatever. You're, you're, you're thinking it, it makes it, it's never going to be easy, but it's easier to motivate yourself knowing that I'm doing this because that's where the cash is coming from. You know, I don't have any, I don't have any problems without motivating. I can, I can leave tomorrow and go source them for a couple of weeks and have no issues. <laughs> uh, but yeah. other, other than life, I can't, of course, but uh, what Johnny's big surgery is Tuesday, but. It's uh that part you don't need any motivation for. It's it's fine things in your mind that trigger the the pleasure the reward part from the part that you don't like. And if that doesn't work, um, outsource that part. It means hire a lister, um, hire somebody to take the pictures, you know, an employee. I mean, I'm I'm facing the grim reality that I've got to have an employee. I just can't. At some point, you can't do. There's only so much you can do with eBay, with Amazon, with YouTube. Uh, and 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 actually have a life without this stuff consuming you. So I mean, I'm not, I'm at that point where that's going to have to happen. But I've actually I've actually considered, and I'm still toying with the idea of actually like reducing the quality of my lit my photographs on my listings. Only, only you know, just kind of skip the solid white background part. I know it helps sell an item, but if I can just take pictures uh, of items, just kind of not necessarily wherever they sit, but, you know, just nonchalantly, it'd be a lot faster to get listings up. It'd be a lot easier. It'd be more, uh, you know, easier for me to handle. But, uh, you know, that's that's probably for another topic at another time. I, I struggle with that too, Jason. <clears throat> Wade has also showed you that if you take a couple minutes to, to use PhotoFuse, you know, most of the lighting didn't make any difference because the background really really makes the picture anyway so because because uh, I've, I've seen him you know show it to people in these hangouts that we've done mm. and he's like i just took this picture. it doesn't matter where he is just just fix the fit around it and the, and the photo looks outstanding so there's there's trade-offs i struggle with that too uh, like scott said it it comes down to for me i want to like eliminate as much stress in my life as possible and i realize that that is i think that is the key that is what I've realized over the last two years of doing this full time is eliminate as much stress as possible. Um, it, it's funny. I, I watched uh, the show and they, they said something that really like resonated with me yesterday. Humans are, are, are dead longer than we're alive. I mean, think about that. We are dead longer than we are alive. And so for me, I want to, I want to create like this business so I can spend as much time with my family and have fun as much as I possibly can. And to do that, I've got to eliminate stress. And that comes to your, your point, Jason, is I get the fact that you want to go quick on your listings and there's no right or wrong answer here. But for me, I used to try that option. But I, when I create my listings, especially at this new eBay store, I want like the best photos, the best description, the best title. Because if it's not moving, it's either one of two things. It's either price or it's demand for the product. 
And that's, it eliminates all the other obstacles there. So it's either demand or price. If I have really good titles, really good description and really good photos, it takes a little bit longer, but I feel like the items sit less. And um, the only thing I need to do to move at that point is probably reduce the price. That's just my point of view, but, and then, and, and, and turn to that, do more expensive items. So I don't want to do anything that's not going to give me a $20 profit. And that's how I negate the issues. If I do anything, if I do stuff that, if I a source or get stuff listed, that's $20 more profit, then I can spend a little bit more time on the photos and the description, and the title. And uh, that's just my point of view. Sure. Absolutely. But both best ways, like I, I get your struggle because you're sitting there buying these, all these units and you're getting all this inventory and you're like, holy crap, I'm one guy and I've got to find a way to do this. So I, oh, yeah. I struggle with that. Yep. Hey, I had my best week listing last week on eBay. I listed five items. <laughs> Dang, nice. Nice. For the, whole, for the whole week. Dang. Do you guys write down anything? Like I saw someone writing down number of listings per day. Do you guys write down revenue listed per day, listings, anything like that? Kind of show you, change your mindset, because that's kind of get where we're hitting about, right? Mindset, changing your mindset in order to accomplish the goals that you want to. Uh, I just track, I, I had I do two Amazon shipments a week. So I, if I could fit the third one in, I do Monday and Friday. Um, I try to get a Wednesday one in, but uh, like this week, there's no Wednesday. <laughs> do you check it off anywhere or is it more mental? Yeah, right here. Right there. Jason Wade, do you guys want, write anything down? Daily tasks? Monthly? Anything? Man, I'll tell you what. That is something that I really need to start doing because I think it would benefit me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily write down like uh, a list of things that I have to get done. I, I should start writing down a list of things that I did get done. Um, and the reason for that is so that you know, at least you can start somewhere. And if you keep a list of things that you did get done today, maybe, you know, then you have a milestone for tomorrow. And so I think that's something I should do. Uh, by the way, congratulations on 5k, Jason. Thank you. Yeah. I don't do, I don't track it. I just have stuff. I know I want two FBA shipments. Um, and then there's there's minimums, uh, so that's that's gonna be a minimum of a five k profit a week. Uh, each one's a minute. I stream the two. So one of mine I had, I don't know, forty one hundred. The other one was like seventeen or eighteen hundred. So I, I got a five k goal in my head to get between the two shipments. I don't care which one it is. Which one's the big one? They could be the same. And then it's five YouTube videos a week, um, and two of those are live shows. So I've I've got big things in my head that I do. I don't track down to the how many listings because. I'm not built that way. So I, I just have an over, I have overall goals and I don't, don't limit myself to how I get there. Yeah. I don't, I don't write down listings. I do. I probably should turn them off. I do get the emails that say so-and-so has went live when you list on eBay. Uh, Cause I just end up deleting those anyway, but mentally for me, I want to put between one and five a day minimum. So if I at least list one item mentally, I can tell myself I at least did something. Um, but I kind of, I streamlined my processes to get there, right? When he first started, I would take a picture of one item, I would do the listing, and then I list it. Well, now I batch everything. I take all my pictures first, list what I can. I hit sell similar. Uh, what I started doing is I, everything's on my phone, at least all my pictures. So what I will do is I will create drafts of them uh, uh, in Amazon as well as in eBay. So as I think Wade was stating time, right? Time is our most important aspect. Uh, to minimize, you know, when I'm sitting around for five minutes at work not doing anything, I have all my drafts set up and I can go in and uh, validate them and hit list. So I now have all these drafts set up where if I can't get to them or finalize them, I can do them when I'm out. I, I want to say one thing. Hopefully, am I buffering to you guys? I look good on my screen, but. Um, I think it fixed. Everyone had to refresh. So one of the biggest things I think a majority of everybody that watching struggles with, and I think a lot of people still struggle with it is um, watching content, watching too much content on YouTube and not working. Um, like right now we're talking, right? We could create our own podcast. You don't necessarily need to watch us talk, but uh, so many people like will book out. I mean, think about this, this show is an hour, right? So imagine if you watch this show every single day and you watch two other shows, that means three hours of your day, 
you dedicated towards watching people talk about reselling, right? That's three hours of your eight hour day per se that you are consuming content and not working on your business. Cause sometimes it's tough. Like when you're watching content, <clears throat> it is a struggle to watch the content and continue to list because you have that noise in the background. Now, some people like doing it. Some people can do it, but the vast majority of us can't. I struggle with that early on. I was consuming way too much content when I should have been focusing more on the business, maybe had music on as opposed to, you know, live, live YouTube shows, because even though we could create a podcast, everybody would then be, you know, watching as opposed to working. So let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know if you guys have that problem consuming too much content on YouTube and not working enough. Now, I think it's a lot. A lot of me is I've replaced the YouTube. I don't watch TV anymore. I can't. I watched two movies today for the first. That's the first movie I watched in probably six months. I just don't watch the TV anymore. I watch college. I watch Alabama play college football. Other than that, I just don't watch any TV. But the one thing I, I, I need to not have the voice. Music is great for me, so I've got Pandora. I play it in the background. Um, the other thing is, is the distractions. I stayed up all night one night the other night because I had fallen asleep and taken a nap at the wrong time. I'm like, well, I can't go to sleep, and, and I, I work. There's nobody up, <laughs> so there's no distractions and no possible anything. There's nothing at three o'clock in the morning. It's easy to focus for me because, I mean, you're not going to watch an infomercial uh, through the day. Uh, there's no new content coming up. There's no notifications. Um, it's just Pandora playing out here in the middle of the night. And uh, I do very well. Um, I do very well overnight. People are like, why do you stay up so late? Because the distractions die. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people probably don't know this, but if you watch YouTube on your mobile device, um, if you go to YouTube and then you go to the uh, click on your picture. Okay. And then right down here, it says time watched. If you click on time watched, it'll actually show you how much time you watched the past day, uh, yesterday the past week and what your daily average is and you can actually keep track of how much time you're spending on youtube and if you know that might actually help you in uh in killing a habit if you have if you have a bad habit being on youtube oh my gosh we're gonna have to do this for the whole panel all right let's <laughs> start with jason and you better, uh, you better be you better be uh telling us to the to the minute Okay. Uh, what the past week is that what you want no, no 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 i want today yesterday past week and daily average all right today 49 minutes yesterday 37 minutes the past week six hours 11 minutes and my daily average is 53 minutes Ooh, okay i'm gonna go last that was not, that wasn't bad all right chris go ahead man oh. <laughs> oh. i need to go i should have gone first damn it <laughs> my, all right all right today now go i gotta ahead. i'll explain after this Today is an hour and 11 minutes. Yesterday was 20 minutes. Past week was 20 hours and 13 minutes. Oh! Whoa. <laughs> Daily average is two hours and 53 minutes. Dang. All That's right. Why is that because like you stated, I, I put it on at work and I just listen to all you guys. The Tuesday, Thursday show, I'm just listening and I'm doing my work. So Okay. That's so we put a 40 hour or 40 hours per week is the average, right? Uh, obviously, if you're a full-time reseller, it seems like 80 hours or you're an entrepreneur or you're a business owner. But then you got Chris over here spending 20 hours. That's half of an average work week, guys. And that's mostly during the day. That's Wait, not you got, home. Don't put your numbers yet in chat, guys, um, because I, I, I want to ask Scott and then you guys can put your numbers. But go ahead, Scott. Tell us what your numbers are, because I'm, I'm today two hours and three minutes. Uh, yesterday, forty-three minutes. The week is fourteen hours and seventeen minutes, so an average of two hours, two minutes. You gotta realize I host a show two days a week. That's two hours, so that's four. That's four of those hours. Yeah. And I do a Friday night show and a Sunday night show. So of the fourteen hours, you gotta look at. I'm on a live show. So, uh, that's only if you watch if you watch a replay of your live show, Scotty. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, but I have it playing on, on the side, so it counts as a bit. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right now, this is playing on the side for chat. So yes, you got to remember that this is mine's playing too, so it's, it's counting as being watched. 
Jason, didn't you create a, a group? It wasn't um, Resellers Anonymous. It was YouTube Anonymous, right? I could be wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, maybe I should. He also All got. Right. I got a wife. I got a wife who I uh, take the doctor's appointment. So what do I do in the doctor's office? Yeah. I want to do there because. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean everybody's got downtime. She All got right. a little check for the break the other day. It was an hour and thirty-seven minutes before we got called back. Oh, <laughs> dang, man! Yeah, I got the so I'm just myself. I'm like, I'll just keep watching. I'll just keep watching whatever I was watching. Um. All right. So today, one hour fifteen minutes. Yesterday, 31 minutes. Past week, 10 hours, 22 minutes. Jesus. <laughs> it, it's like, how many drinks did you have? Well, let me count the bottles. One, two. Uh, and then uh, daily average, one hour, 28 minutes. Craziness. Craziness. So even me, I think that um, this all comes down to, and I don't know if the panel, I think the panel will agree here. It all comes down, think about this, like know your numbers whether it's how many products you're listed for eBay, whether it's you know how much product you're sending to Amazon, whether it's what you're spending your money on, money on, both for business and personal, your birthday, whatever the case may be, know your numbers. Um, because I honestly didn't think I spent 10 hours and 22 minutes every week on YouTube. Like, Jesus. I'm trying to figure out how I spent two hours a day. I, hadn't, I have not watched two hours a day. Yeah, so, I mean, whatever. It's just, a, it's crazy. Just know your numbers, but I'm going to ask the chat, 117 people watching. There was a really cool, uh, somebody put flips, copy his, because you can just change your numbers, but he said today, past week, daily average. So give me your guys' information. I want to see, I, and be truthful, you lurkers out there. I want to see what this, uh, what the numbers are. Because I am curious. Um, and, and, and if you have problems, Jason does have a group. YouTubers and YouTubers Anonymous, you can join. Dot com. Dot com. I mean, Wade's full of crap. <laughs> uh, dot com. Hey, I'm the one that le needs it the least. It sounds like so. Yeah, you actually are. Um, you uh, are. Okay, that's what it was. Well, I thought I went early last night. Uh, I was uh, Alex and uh, DG Flipper. They were doing that. They've got a new shoot show for. Uh, Newer YouTuber, uh, newer YouTubers, and newer uh, newer resellers, and I was, I guess, forty five minutes from them last night. But oh yeah, so it's up after midnight. You can, you can tell it's a sore subject because we only have two people have put it in chat so far. <laughs> so, um, but today eight today eight hours. Look at Sue Ann, fifty four hours. Dang. Nice. Dang. Wouldn't you agree, Scott, that sometimes you need a fresh per perspective to look into your business? I mean, I know that I know that everybody, you know, sometimes it's nice to have somebody kind of look in to see what you're doing. Maybe they have some better options or just different ideas, whether it be like a spouse or a brother or, you know, somebody that you trust or somebody that, you know, is in the same field as you. I feel like that helps help me, you know, like I've had um, not only personal, um, but also like online friends that has helped me with kind of like seeing some different things that they do and processes that I can do that kind of can cut time. Cause really yeah. it's just time. Yeah. I think the best thing to do with uh, even with having someone else, a uh, fresh eyes look at it is, is they will also ask you questions and it makes you understand and makes you justify how you do things. And that, that to me is if I can't come up with a good answer, I'm immediately open for change and that may not work for everybody else, but, you know, I'm a person that likes to know why and why I do things and that kind of stuff. So if I'm doing things just because I've always done it, that's not an acceptable answer. I, you know, I'm, I'm apt to change that if there's a better way. But if I'm already doing it some way because it, you know, somebody asked me, why do you do this? I'm like, because it's the way Inventory Lab does it. I'm doing it that way. Uh, but I think, too, guys, remember. For you full timers, if this doesn't work full time, you're back to a nine to five. It's just simple as that. And for you part timers, if this, this doesn't work and you want to go full time, you're never going to be able to go full time. And if it doesn't work when you're part time, you're going to end up quitting because it, it, it's not working. You're going to go back to your full time job. So, like, I think the biggest thing for me is you got to be open and you got to be open to be criticized in your business. Like, and that's why one reason why I recommend everybody join social media. I think everybody should join social media, whether it be Instagram or YouTube, because what happens is when you put yourself out there, people 
want to help you. Whether it's good advice or bad advice, you're going to have to weed through that. But people want to help you. And I think it makes you better at your online reselling when you have to be held accountable. And then also put your journey out there for feedback because that's the ultimate feedback. You put a video out there of what you're doing today and what you're selling and how your process is and where you're listing your items and where you're housing your items. You're going to get so many comments of people that want to help you. And I think that it makes you a better reseller. So I've always been a big fan of starting your own social media up. I think that's really helped me. If there's one tip I can give you tonight that has helped me, I don't think I'd be nearly as efficient and as good as, um, you know, I am now without actually having an audience. Uh, because had I not had that, you know, it's kind of like, what, what do you do but when closed doors? What do you do behind the closed doors, right? And um, last night, I was like, God, I need ice cream. But I'm like, I need to lose weight for eBay Open. So what do I do? Well, I go get an ice cream. I eat that ice cream. I go sit down and watch American Gods. And then I'll halfway through American Gods, I'm like, I need another ice cream again, right? And behind closed doors, I'm a slob. And I'm, I am watching uh, YouTube for 10 hours a day. Like, But that being said, you know, um, would you want, like, you need to put yourself out there on social media for your business. Uh, and or personal so that way you have you can keep yourself accountable to the people that are watching you yeah there's a lot yeah. of a lot of benefits uh i have put out a video this morning about uh stuff i found the yard sale and i'm like i don't even know what's on the bottom of this camera third or fourth comment that's an auto rewinder <laughs> i'm like okay i mean it, it's it's amazing what the, the audience is uh, never did i mean we think we're you know hey we're showing this or we're showing that but don't never discount the audiences got a, just a ton of knowledge and um, it, it was like I hadn't even gone 15 minutes and somebody already had told me exactly what that stupid thing was and uh, I never said anywhere on the camera I, I maybe I noticed the big bulky bottoms but you know who thinks of an auto rewinder on a camera you don't rewind digital and and that's the thing too is when I do storage units and if anybody does storage units will know this I never list anything from the storage unit until I release my video there's a reason for that so whether you're thrifting or your storage unit buying, or you're doing what Scott is and going to all these stores and doing retail arbitrage, like people provide feedback. And when I list, when I when I go to a storage unit, I actually will not list one thing from that storage unit until I release the video publicly because there's a lot of smarter people out there that will know some of these items. So I don't underprice it or overprice it, or maybe I have an item that I was gonna do something with, but as actually has extreme value. It happens a lot. So um, social media helps in many ways that, you know, and. And there was well, that was the biggest problem with me is I was reselling long before I was on YouTube and Instagram. And I can definitely tell the difference from back then to now. Just the overall business has, has been a lot more healthier since than since I started social media over a year and a half ago. So for yeah. those that those that always think they're gonna start, just freaking start, upload a video. There's so many more benefits to it, but that's it. I just well, there's to- there's a couple of other benefits to to social media as well. Like for instance, I mean, you you can gain ac- accountability partners in your in your business. And so, for instance, for what you guys didn't see before we started this live was Wade asked me a simple question. He said, "Jason, how many listings did you get done today?" And I had to tell him none, and it made me feel empty inside to tell Wade that I didn't get anything done today as far as getting listings up. So, you know, Wade is somewhat of an accountability partner when he asks me that question. I'd like to be able to tell him 10, 15, 20. It just wasn't the case today. So they, you have that. And also, you know, being being back here by yourself listing stuff all day long can get, you know, it is it is kind of lonely. And we're not going to go with the whole, you know, you don't have to be lonely <laughs> bit. But at the other, at the, uh, at the, <laughs> Um, at the other end of the spectrum, okay, there's, you could get on Google Hangouts with a few of your other reseller friends and hang out while you're, while you're doing work, or you could, uh, get on a peer.in, which is another, uh, hangout, uh, kind of like a video call hangout, get on video calls with some of your reseller friends and, and work together. Yeah. Accountability is a big thing. I can't tell you how many times if I have a monthly goal show, I want to be able to come and say, Hey. Here's my numbers that I hit. I bested next month uh, and stuff that I find in the store, right? Uh, I can't have it in the show and say, hey, guys, I didn't find anything today. 
it'd be kind of boring. So that also drives me the accountability to say, hey, I have to buy something today to, to show you guys, and I have to list it. I, one of the big things that I think a lot of people struggle with, and I still do, is the alarm clock. You know, if I can tell you a remedy for that, if you guys are on the West Coast, let me know how many people are on the West Coast. I'm about to give you a crazy cool tip that's going to help you. So let me know in chat if you're on the West Coast, type one, but, um, or even central possibly. But, uh, you know, one thing that is, is interesting is, is if you don't think, I, I say this all the time and I, I kick myself. I do not want to say this, but I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time. No, you don't. It's not that you don't have time. It's just you're not managing your time. There's plenty of people that have time that run multi-million dollar companies. They have time to do everything. And you could say, well, they have employees. They have, you know, people helping them out, right? Which is true, but they they, they probably didn't stay, they probably didn't just jump in that role, right? So I think that the the biggest thing, guys, is if you're saying you don't have time, cut out the fluff, look at your YouTube numbers, find out how much YouTube you're watching. Uh, are you watching TV? Like, what is the fluff stuff that's not necessarily helping you with your business? And then also, to the tip, because there's a lot of people that type one, they're on the West Coast. This is the tip, guys, 130 people watching. Are you ready? If you are on the West Coast and you need to wake up early, and this is one thing that has helped me. I started waking up two hours earlier. So your boy Wade don't get up at 9 o'clock anymore, right? Um, you need to go to Bearded Picker's YouTube channel, right? You guys ready? Hit the little bell icon. Make sure you're subscribed because on the, West Coast, on the West Coast, he is freaking early. So if you want your personal alarm clock and you want to consume a little YouTube content, you can kill two birds with one stone. Just make sure you're you're subscribed to the Bearded Picker because every morning, every morning I get, oh, what's today's topic? And you know, you're, you know how you rub your eyes and you're wondering, where am I? When really you're in your bed and you've slept there for you know hundreds of times. Um, but it's nice to it's nice to wake up early, guys. If you need more time, wake up earlier. Yeah, that alarm clock Saturday morning when it went off yesterday, I couldn't remember why I said it. I was like, oh my god. That's the worst. I'm terrible at getting up. I think that's my my day job's the only thing that makes me get up. I'm terrible at going to bed on a decent hour. It's usually like two or three in the morning when I'm like, I think I should probably go lay down. <laughs> it was like 2.30 like the other night when y'all whisked out on me when I stayed up all night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I felt bad, you? too. I was like, man, I'm going to leave Scott all by himself. <laughs> no worries. I, I just turned Pandora on and kept working. Jason, what the last, last thing I want to ask you to explain is like, how important is your health? why you're doing this whether you're part-time full-time how important is your health man oh dude uh your health should be uh first and foremost you only have one body uh if you abuse this body well you don't just you know you don't get another one uh you just gotta deal with uh deal with the consequences and hopefully you get better and you learn from your mistakes that's kind of that's where it's all at you know i quit uh I quit a full-time job making decent money in oil and gas to go full-time reselling because, you know, 12 hour overnight shift is just not something my body's cut out for. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to make your own schedule. Um, but you can't abuse that. So. And speaking of abusing your bodies, I watched the dirt today and how the hell did Motley Clue live through the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, why are these dudes not dead? Mm hmm. <laughs> There's yeah. some weird, weird ones out there. But yeah, it's uh, it's once you understand that uh, it, it takes a little while to be, to understand you're the boss and you know all those things that were put in place for you by other bosses. You know you realize why those things are important. So you know more more of a schedule, more of a plan. You, you start naturally becoming that planner. That you know. As you go on, you know, Wade's talking about he's he's been doing more of that this year. The first year, you're you're just I'm gonna tell you, you're just lost. You get by because you're good at reselling, you're you're good at making money that way. But that second year you start thinking, I'm good at this, but what do I do to maximize? What do I do to take advantage of every opportunity, every and you know, it's it's an it's an evolution in your thought the, the longer you go full time. And so it it does truly benefit you to that you to get to the advanced thinking, not just the day to day operations, but the 
the advanced thinking of, you know, now I'm building some planning, some scheduling, those kind of things that, you know, the first, first year we all, we all struggle through it. I just think that one of the things guys is remember we, and I, I'm not speaking to everybody, right. When I say this, but at least for me, you forget, like, you, you have memories in your minds of things when you're reselling, for example, like uh, kind of like for me, I can remember the day that I quit my corporate job last April that I worked there for 10 years and started working full time. Right. But sometimes you forget, like you forget, like just the different like processes or different things that has made you who you are today. And so um, that's one thing that I struggle with at the beginning was just remembering like m my emotions, you know, because sometimes you wake up and you're like, I love reselling, but is this for me um, when you're full time, right? You have those thoughts. It's just natural. Everybody has those thoughts. You go through an obstacle, you have an obstacle, you have an issue, and you think the issue is too big. So you have that mindset, well, is this for me? And I think the, the way to overcome that is sometimes it's hard to remember what life was back before you really wanted, you had those butterflies, right? It's, 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 it's sometimes it's hard to remember back before you had those butterflies of going full time. So that's why I highly recommend you guys document your journey, whether it's public or private. Um, so that way you can go back. Like I did that video right before I went full time of me leaving that job. So that way, if I ever have any issues, if I ever think I can't do something and I don't have that support system, I can go back and watch that video and be like, that kid was miserable. And now, you know, I may have this issue, but life is so much better. So um, remember, grass is not always greener on the other side. I've been a victim of that. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people have. So just make sure you document your journey as you're going throughout the years, especially the first couple of years is really important. Yeah. The thing is, is like you can't lose the fire, you know, the drive within to really, you know, do this business, especially if you're going full time with it, because the moment you realize that you're waking up more days and telling yourself you don't feel like doing anything today and you follow through with not doing anything that day, the that's when you're going to fail as, as your own boss. And, you know, as a full-time reseller, you have to wake up with a passion and with a drive to do the things that you need to get done because nobody is going to tell you that you have to do it. Nobody's going to be breathing down your neck telling you you have to get this done before you quit the day. And when it comes to social media, like somebody just put that they watched 30 hours, 30 hours. Who was that? Um, Richard Bell. Yeah. And remember, I get, I, I get this question a lot, especially in our Patreon group, right? A lot of people want to do social media and they ask me to help them. And I'm always like, okay, it's, it's a mindset change when you want to do social media. You've got to change from being the consumer to the creator. Um, because you can't really do both really well because it eats up too much of your day. So if you are sitting there and I'm sure, you know, we've got over 130 people watching and only 15 people said how many hours they actually watch on YouTube. So if you are one of those people that looked at your app and was like, holy cow. And on top of that, you're one of those people that want to create content, not only to document your journey, but also to be on YouTube. You've got to change your mindset now to creating and not necessarily consuming. Because when you had those two things, reselling, budgeting, family, all that, it's too much to get done in a day. So really understand, you know, if you want to be a creator and you have a lot of hours under your belt, you know, change that mindset from being a consumer, consuming content to a creator, um, consume less content is what it comes down to. Yeah, so there is that. There's a lot of truth to that. And uh, I consume a lot of Gary Vee. And the one thing that he talks about is, is that as the creator, if you too much, too much of the other side causes paralysis because it forces you into thinking that you've got to be, be perfect as a creator and that'll mess with your mind. You, at the end of the day, none of us is perfect. You never make perfect videos and you just have to keep making content, content that, you know, is what you're, what you're into, what you're about, into the field you're in. The audience will, the audience will give you feedback the audience will say, Hey, we hated that. Or, Hey, can you, whatever it is. But you know, you see it with a lot of artists, you know, the first, what's the, what do they call it? The second album slump, that first, that, that first album, they, it's just a phenomenal success. They kill it. Everybody loves it. And they go into the studio to make the second one. They try to make it perfect. And everybody goes, it's not that great. <laughs> they over, you, you over try it. 
a lot of stuff and it's uh it's it, it's very true with the creating youtube content as well so you know consuming a lot of content will can par paralyze you too just be aware of that krillin thanks for the super chat appreciate it scott you saw that right about the estate sale yeah i, I actually my my van doesn't even get warmed up for five hours so i'm good uh so I, I mean you're right right um a lot of people when they start off on social media they, they think about it too much. They look at it. They edit it. They say, oh, it's not good and delete it. When you're first starting, just put stuff up there. Just take pictures, take video. It might, mine first sucked when I first started. They still suck, but put them out there. So, and I can't tell you how many times that I'm either thrifting or buying stuff. And I say, man, that would have made a good picture if I took that. Or that would make a good video if I only left the camera on five minutes longer. So you start learning those things. Don't beat yourself up. You're learning uh, different things to look for, different pictures to take, different things to put out there. Uh, so just do it. Yeah, and uh, Trista Ray makes a great point too. That that same thing works in reselling. Uh, you get overloaded with with a lot of information, and it gets locked in your head where you can't even. It gets hard to function. You know, you'll be at yard sales. You know, you don't get to as many yard sales as you would because you're trying to get every single item out of each yard sale. Trying to look for stuff that's not there, um, you know. So it, that that information to overload to is, it, it it it's in a lot of different areas. You just have to be you have to be very wary of it. It works the same way with inventory. You know, if you if you surround yourself with tons of inventory that you have to list, then your then your mentality turns from like, I'm going to list this to where do I start? You know, and and at that point it becomes a little overwhelming. It can. And I can't tell you how many times that I go to a closeout uh, person selling closeout merchandise, right? I say, ah, I don't know if this is going to sell. Only give me 20 of them. Well, what happened was I sold through the 20 real quick, called them back, and I'm uh, they already sold the rest of them to somebody else. I second-guessed myself, and then I lost out on that opportunity. So a lot of times, if you know, you know, this is a good item or this is a good video, this is something good, go for it, right? The worst you can do is buy more stuff and make more money. Yeah, that's why I say a lot. If you trust yourself to buy the first one, buy the last one. I I don't leave. You know, <laughs> cashiers ask me all the time, hey, I didn't know that was on clearance. Are there any more back there? I got a bass in the 30. Uh, no. <laughs> if, I got, if I got the last one, I'll buy them all. And it's, and I said I would go big or go home. It's really not the go big or go home mentality because, you know, it's it's more gambling it's more educated gambling you know the more experience you've got especially in you know like like you with jerseys chris i would trust you to buy jerseys and hats whatever whatever number you have because i can't tell you how many i've seen you sell and the experience you have in that area for me i'd have to do test buys to 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 understand but but for you so it's if it's something that you're strong in you you, you have you have to trust yourself and go for it i I can't, I can't say this enough, but I think that's, um, it piggybacks off Scott is you have to be a believer in yourself when nobody else will. Um, there's a lot of people on chat that, you know, want to do this, whether they're part-time or full-time or reselling in general. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't think this is a real time, real job. Like Scott, you run around stores and scan stuff and that you're like able to pay your bills. Like uh, people don't understand that, you know, you ever get people ask you what you do and you sell on eBay and they're like, is that the 40 year old virgin movie? Like eBay is still around. They don't understand that this is something that a way of, of life. And I think one too, that's, it's crazy is think back. Some of you may, may not have this feeling, but think back before you found out this world existed. This is a world guys. This is a world that a lot of people don't know exists. You know, back, I'm sure there's a lot of people in chat that realized that Amazon produced all these products and they're selling them. They like they made them and produced them. And so they didn't know that it's individuals like Scott and other people that are, are scanning and sending these things in. So I just think that it's it's really crucial to like believe in yourself when nobody else will. And I know that's easier said than done. But then you got the whole other gamut to where you've got really cool spouses like Ashley, Scott's wife, I mean Chris's wife, Jason, right? Jason's got an amazing wife that's super supportive. Um, and so, you know, I, I get that you may have that support, but those that don't believe in yourself, because this is definitely viable, um, the next like three or four years, they, they, they think that online reselling is, is, is going to double, um, just the amount of people that are selling online working from home. So I don't believe that that should be a, a thing that you should think of competition wise, but more, you know, acknowledging that this is a great 
time to resell and make money online. So believe in yourself. Um, eBay Shopping is sending a couple hundred books and hasn't sold anything yet. What give? Uh, check your prices, dude. Uh, it could or check whatever. It could. Uh, your prices could have changed very, and they do change frequently. You can be off a penny or two and be out of a buy box. So it's 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 you, mm -hmm. once once you send them in, and then once they are uh, no longer in being moved around the country and not not in back order, then you know your pricing is very uh, very important. So check that out. Used books, the prices change so drastically so quickly on Amazon. Um, if you're going to be dabbling in books uh, on a regular basis, I would suggest possibly look into a repricer tool. Um, that way you stay on top of the market and you'll be the first sale. Tristan Ray, thank you for the super chat. Dropping truth bombs. She mainly learned to take action. And if you're in the chat, you guys know, right? You guys are here. You guys know you can buy stuff for little to nothing and make a profit on it. So as Wade said, trust yourself, have confidence. You, you, uh, you should have no issues. The, uh, and that, that question too is easier. If people ask what you do, you know, the, if you tell them I sell stuff on Amazon, they, you're immediately, no more questions asked. Everybody understands Amazon. You tell them eBay, you gotta, you got a lot of explaining to do Lucy for some yeah. reason. <laughs> some of the I show my coworkers, I say, you know, I bought this for $2 and I list it for 50. They look at me like I have four heads. <laughs> it, it, that, that, that is a true thing, guys. If you're, if you're an audience and, and you, you actually see that arbitrage, that you, you actually can see the value in these items, you are a freak. I've said this on the last couple of weeks, and you don't, not everybody gets it. Not everybody can look at an item and say, at a thrift store and go, I know this is worth $100 or whatever it is, whatever that number is. Um, I know I can make money on this item by reselling it because there's a there's a price now where I've got it and there's a price where I can sell it. That is that is not something that comes normal to people. You know, people are taught to this is the price, pay it. And not they're not taught to uh hey, this is what I got it for, I'm gonna sell it for this because a consumeristic society, you're taught to be the consumer. You're taught to be the one that goes, Hey, I must you're Go into debt, buy this car. Go into debt to buy this. Here's your credit card. When you're in college or whatever, they they hook you pretty quickly about being the consumer, and then everything is. They tell you everything has an expiration date. All oh, that's old fashioned. All oh, that's uh, that milk that, that goes out tomorrow is no good. I mean, whatever it is, uh, they because years ago in the early 1900s, uh, a lot of it started with light bulbs. Light bulbs. There are still light bulbs around from the 1900s that are still burning today. They were made so good back then. Um, I think it was GE or all those big companies went to their folks and said, y'all have got to plan. We need planned obsolescence because we're never going to sell enough light bulbs because they're lasting forever. <laughs> they started all this craziness. Yeah, it's the same thing with tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look... Google the world's longest burning light bulb. I'll do it for you. Right, yeah. Y'all be crazy. So I actually just kind of had an idea that I think is going to help me um, list more or at least list more consistently on eBay. Take, I think I'm going to take my pictures with my phone because I take all my pictures with my phone, but I'm going to take them at the end of the, at the end of the evening. I'm going to like set out like an hour before bed and just take as, many photos of as many items as I can. And then tomorrow, um, whenever I have a little free time here and there, uh, between tasks that I'm doing throughout the day, I can list an item and just do that throughout the day tomorrow. I think that that would actually, I think that, that would actually benefit me greatly. I'm, I love writing stuff down. I write stuff down all the time when I'm downtime, I put, I put a simple to-do list. What am I going to do tonight for eBay thrifting reselling? And I put some simple ones and I put some uh, ones that might be harder to get to if I don't have enough time. So I, and then the next day I cross off what I accomplished. So that little task list helps me a ton. Uh, and probably the one bad thing, and I'd like to hear in chat if you guys do this, I'm OCD about looking at watchers, stuff I just listed to see how many views it has. I scroll through it. And I look, I like looking at it. It's probably a time suck, but I do. Yeah. That. Yeah. There it is in the chat. Uh, there, the, the Sentinel light is in, uh, 
East Avenue, Livermore, California, maintained by the Livermore Fire Department. It's been burning since 1901. Ooh. Wow. Tip of the day. Yeah, one thing, too, uh, that kind of helped me, guys, I think this is a big one, was we all know what we don't like doing, what we procrastinate. You know, we procrastinate on some of these items, whether it be listing or taking photos or cleaning things, you know, that before you list it. I think that those tasks that you need to do, the things that you need to maybe possibly do what uh, Chris said and write the things that you do not like doing down and then write the things that you like doing down on a piece of paper. And then take those things that you do not like doing and do those at the beginning of the day, if possible. Because what happens is if you wait towards the end of the day, you're tired and you're compounding the fact that you're tired on top of something that you don't want to do, whether it be cleaning, listing, or photographing, and it probably won't get done. Not saying everybody, but possibly get the stuff done that you busted out the stuff, whether it's customer service or whatever you do not like doing while you're fresh. That way you can zombie through the rest of the day of what you like doing that you enjoy doing so you can kind of get everything done. Just an idea. I like that idea. Yeah, I've done it for a long time. Do the do the stuff you don't like to first. Preferably with coffee in hand. Multiple. Or whatever substance of your choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, but only at reselling.com. Resellers Anonymous. <laughs> All right, guys, we're coming up on an hour. Any other habits, tips, things we missed? Uh, no, not really. Uh, the only other thing that kind of screwed me at the beginning and, and, you know, I've learned to hone in on this was don't assume. Like uh, the other day, I saw, I saw Scott with this big, beautiful black wig, right? And I'm like, God, I wish I was there with him grabbing all that gold bars at these garage sales and flipping them. You know, and I'm thinking, dang, he must be crushing it. I bet he made like a thousand dollars that day. And then I'm sitting here not doing anything. So I assumed, you know, all joking, all joking aside is, <laughs> yes. yes, don't assume guys. So when you're on Instagram and you see Scott crushing it every week, kudos to him, hit the like, because you don't want to be jealous. You want to be, you want to support. But more importantly, realize that he may have a different situation. It may be where he's at, even though they have a crappy football team, they have amazing stuff at garage sales, right? So you don't want to assume at all. Don't assume. Yeah, I'll take our crappy team over anybody. So there you go. The, the one thing I'll tell you, uh, the caveman here will tell you that uh, it's important to be honest with yourself and really understand your strengths and weaknesses. Um, I know that, you know, these working hangouts and stuff are very popular right now and I get it, you know, it, this is a lonely game, but it's very distracting for me, even in the background, because I have to listen to find out what's going on. Uh, putting eighties rock on, you know, with the crew or something, I've heard them things over and over and over and over. So I do better with, damn it. I do better with, uh, music in the background. It's just whatever your cup of tea, but be honest with yourself. Is it? You know, is that what's distracting? Is that what's slowing you down? No matter what it is. And just be honest with yourself. Do I do I hate doing this? I need to outsource it or I need to do it first. You know, be honest, you know, because you, you can't fool yourself no matter how much you try to hide from it. You know, and for, if at the end of the day, you've got to work on yourself and only you can do that. Jason? Just don't, uh, don't give up on yourself. You know, uh, just because today was unproductive doesn't mean that tomorrow has to be, you know, um, right now is the, the very first minute of the rest of your life. So, I mean, just don't give up on yourself. Try to uh, pinpoint the, uh, the bad uh, examples that you've been giving yourself and, and try to change them. Uh, you know, we can only wake up tomorrow and try to be better than we were today. And uh, that's what we should all be doing. Huge tip. I just want to say one last thing. Um, and I don't know if this, this Scott, if you thought about this, but if you think you have a bad situation, I remember when I, and I said this once before, but when Ashley was pregnant with Axel, um, we had, I had to walk the length of the hospital to go to the food, the food court. Right. And the length of the hospital, you'd be surprised how many different like segments within health that you pass. One is cancer. Like, 
One is like x-ray. Like as you walk by, you, you see the plaques. Everybody does, right? You see what's on the walls. Different things that people need to overcome. And these are health issues. Big, right? And I just remember one day we were in the x-ray. She was getting some sort of x-ray done. And um, I had to walk by the can the breast. I don't know. It wasn't breast cancer. It was, um, was it? Uh, it was, um, I think it was like tumors or something. Anyways, it was a crazy cancer, right? And I walked in there and it was, they shared the same waiting room, basically. There was like two offices and they kind of crossed and you shared the same waiting room. And all I can think to myself was, holy crap, there's, there's people that are extremely young because there was some young people and some old people in there that had issues, right? And they're walking in and out of the, the door. And I'm just thinking, my life, whatever the case may be, whatever obstacle you have, whether it's in reselling, non-reselling, personal, non-personal, business, whatever, like things can always get worse, right? And you don't, you don't ever want to like base your life around it could get worse. But just realize that there's people dealing with some crazy stuff out there. And at least for me, walking through the hospital, it makes you it makes you appreciate where you're at in this moment, you know. And, and every time I have a bad day or there's something that is so small and fixable, but yet I'm in a bad mood, I try to think of that that day that I spent in the hospital. And as I'm walking through those doors and those people that have to deal with that. So the reason I brought up Scott is not only you know everybody knows his wife has is, is, has gone through that, and I'm sure he had felt the same way. Not only for his wife, but also the fact that like anything that happens in your life, anything that may be possibly hindering you to do something great, realize that there's other people out there that have bigger issues and be thankful for where you're at. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I think I talked about it on, on one of the shows. Joni and I talked about that a lot, that uh, it's not just the cancer center she's at. It was not just breast cancer. It was all different types. And it's, we felt kind of strange that we felt very fortunate for what, even though she had the most aggressive breast cancer, it was early, it was treatable. And we had a fairly, even though you can't, it's hard to see, she had a fairly decent prognosis going in. So it should have been the, the outcome it was is what we got. But there are a lot of people, uh, we met a young lady, um, our age, so I'm gonna call her young, um, who who had a less less form of breast cancer than Joni did. And she was already through her treatment. She, she was on our last two when we met her. And the last time she came in, we're like, we're, we're getting ready to celebrate with her because she's going to ring the bell. And, and Johnny looked at me and she said, why is her mom sitting in one of the treatment chairs? Because they've got all the people who are with you sitting in, other, sitting in the chair, the, the support sitting other. And in the time that she'd been fighting her breast cancer, they had diagnosed with her mom with a cancer that the survival rate is 4% over two years. And it was weird that, you know, she, you know, her, Johnny's breast cancer was not, nowhere near the worst thing that these people were dealing with in this room. You know, even though you are absolutely dealing with something that's, you know, life altering, life changing. She was one of the lucky ones in there. And it's hard, it's hard to grasp sometimes, but there are people that there's always somebody generally that's worse off and never, never forget that. All right, guys. Sorry to be a downer on that one, but it's uh, yeah. Take take advantage of every opportunity. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed. Uh, you're guaranteed an opportunity. You have the same opportunity we all do. Go go for it. Agree. Make the best. And make the next day the best it can be. Right. I'm Pick up the lash and make that cash. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. Hey, I didn't have to say it. <laughs> right, guys, guys, Jason right. has the best, the best slogan. Pick yeah, that does. cash and make that cash. <laughs> Jason, right. I think we need to hear you say it before we leave. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. I hope you guys had a great time. Until next time, keep on picking that trash and making that cash. Roll Tide.